Hey there folks, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to deep clean the coils on a Hisense portable air conditioner. So to do that we're going to locate all the screws that are holding the outer shell on, on all sides, and we're going to remove them. But before we do that, we're going to take off this little filter right here and get it out of the way. We'll clean that later. And the four that I'm taking out here, we're going to set them aside on their own because they're actually a bit smaller, so they're a different size. But all the ones that I'm taking out on the outside are all the same size. All right, so now that, we have, now that we have all the screws off, we're gonna start prying this out. It'll come mostly free, but if you need a little assistance from a little pry bar, it might make things a little bit easier. up and lift back. That'll all come out. So all we're going to do is vacuum off this nice fur pile on the side here and then just on the other one on the back and when you do that you're going to follow the coil so you're going to go top to bottom because if you go side to side It'll bend the fins, so we're going to go ahead and start vacuuming. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna apply a coat of a chemical. It's a coil chemical, and I'll show you that in just one second. All right, so this right here, it's called Coil Safe. It's an AC evaporator coil cleaner, it's called. I'll put a link in the description below so you can get it. Thing I like about this, it's concentrated, so it's great value for money, because you have to dilute it with water, which means it'll last a very long time. Plus it's a non-toxic and a non-rinse chemical, which means that you don't have to rinse it when you're done and you don't have to worry about any toxic chemicals being put back into the air when you turn it on. So we're going to go ahead and plug up our two drains because I no longer have the plug, so I'm just going to put some tape over it and then we'll get started with our spray. All right, so even though this chemical is non-toxic, we're going to open up a window Wear gloves, safety glasses, and a mask. And then follow the directions according to dilution and time to leave it on. So we're gonna leave this particular chemical on for about 10 minutes. And right here, I have it already diluted 
in a separate spray bottle and we're just going to go ahead and apply it to the coils. All right, now we wait. All right, so now that we've waited for this to soak, I'm just gonna take an old toothbrush and all the dirt that the chemicals lifted, we're just gonna lightly brush it out. Make sure you still don't brush too hard because you still can bend the fins with the brush. Same thing on the side. All right, and then we're gonna spray it on one more time just to kind of rinse off any stuff that we missed with the brush. And then once it's all dry, then we can put it all back together. All right, now we just wait for it to, it doesn't have to be completely dry, just enough that it's actually dripped out. And then once it has, then we can rinse out the drip tray. We're not gonna actually rinse this out. We're just gonna pour a little water in the drip tray with a cup outside here. And I'll show you what we mean after we're all dripped out. All right, so now that everything's mainly dripped off of the coils there, we're gonna just rinse off the drip tray. I've just put a bucket under my table and we're just going to wheel this over to the edge. And then we're gonna take our tape off. Now we're just going to take a little cup with water. This is just from laundry detergent, a little cap. And we're just going to pour it into the drip tray so all the dirt comes out. And then we just tilt it forward, help it drip out the rest of the way. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna take our mask and our gloves off, make things a little easier. All right, so now that we're ready to put the shell back on, we're just gonna grab the shell here. And we're gonna stretch the sides out and lift it over top of the unit and set it down. And actually before we go any further, there's two screws here that we forgot at the beginning. You'll have to take those out to put the shell back on. Now once the shell is on nice and snug there, we're gonna put this in. And I'll show you right on this piece here. These two slots here, you'll see where they line up, just here and here. That's where your screws are gonna go and we're all done. So you're gonna put the top in first at an angle. And then line up a couple screw holes. And put a couple screws in just to hold this while we work. Okay. 
And to get the two screws into here, I actually have a flexible bit because if I put my impact driver or a drill, I might dent the coils. I'll put a link in the description for this. It's only about 10 bucks on Amazon. Just put it in the end of your drill and put your drill bit on or your screwdriver bit. And then you just hold the end. All right, now that that's done, we're just gonna finish putting all the screws back in where we found them. And then we'll be good to go use the machine again. All right, and then we're just gonna put our filter back on. I cleaned it a little bit after cam off the camera. And that's all there is to it. So just let everything completely dry 100% before I use it. I usually do it at the end of the summer so that it won't be used until the next summer. So that's all you need to do. And it'll be running more efficiently, a lot cooler and a lot fresher. Hopefully this was helpful and please like and subscribe.